Good evening, I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome. We're going to talk tonight about something that's kind of a sensitive issue. Um, we're talking tonight about suicide. Um, there's some, uh, it's a, it's a, unfortunately, it's a reality in our culture and it's growing worse, um, especially since the whole COVID lockdown and all that is, you know, a lot more people are struggling. And, um, and I just had a, a former friend of mine, a woman, um, that I knew really well many years ago, um, a businesswoman in Eugene. And earlier this week, um, she shot and killed herself. And, you know, and she was probably in her 50s or early 60s. And um, life is really hard. And it just gets like that. But we're not going to be depressing about it. But we want to talk about these issues because um, part of the solution to this whole thing is talking about that we, you know, all of us at one time or another can have those feelings and that it's not, um, it's not a bad thing and it's a good thing to talk about them. So I've got a young man here who is, uh, who inspires me. Um, and he's a, a good guy. We're sponsored tonight by New Leaf Hyperbarics and Wellness Center. Um, Matt is very concerned about this issue. We also are sponsored by Chris Dental Family Dentistry, where everyone is welcome, vaccinated or not vaccinated. He doesn't uh, worry about that. That's your business. He just wants to make sure your dental care is done. And you need to make an appointment this month because he's starting to fill up September and October. So everybody goes, oh yeah, I have teeth and they go back to the dentist. So if you get in this month, he can get you in and uh, really, really quickly. And then our other sponsor tonight is Roser Real Estate Group. And they, Cassie's gonna join us and, or Casey's gonna join us and she's got a couple of houses on here uh, that she's gonna tell you about. And then we got Bill London at the end with uh, local news uh, that will get you all excited. So let's get right to Carson real quick here. How's that, Carson? How you doing, man? Good. How are you? I'm good. You guys, this is Carson Lighton. And you came to me, kind of tell people what happened. You came to me a few, several years ago and with this idea. So tell, tell people what happened. First, talk about your friend and, and kind of what happened there. Uh, yeah. Um, so I lost a, you know, a close friend of mine to suicide back in 2017. Um, and, you know, shortly after that, I kind of went through my own uh, depression bouts as well. Um, but really, um, I was in a place that I wanted to do something about uh, how I was feeling and just kind of wanted to make uh, sure that, you know, I didn't have anyone else, uh, any of my buddies feel that same way, too. Um, so, you know, I kind of started uh, thinking about some ideas about, you know, what I could do to spread awareness and um, all that. And, you know, Rick Dancer's name came up with mine. So I shot an email to Rick, I remember. And him and I came in an interview. He came into my high school. And I think I probably got 20,000 views. And ever since then, uh, my kind of nonprofit has kind of boosted off, I'd say. Um, so, you know, that's kind of how Rick and I started. And, you know, that's my story of why I started all this. So. So it's, it's a world free of suicide and that's the name of the organization. And the whole idea is you raise money and then you can go out and spread awareness about what's going on and what, cause there's a lot of information out there. And don't you think part of the, the shame is like for you is like even saying I had these feelings and thoughts and, and, and there's no shame in that. We, we, if you do talk about it, then people can kind of come forward in your life and say, um, you know, what, what are the things people shouldn't say? Um, well, you know, I've always said, you know, it's okay not to be okay. So, uh, you know, it's always fine to, you know, feel struggles or not be, you know, your best self, but, you know, uh, negative things that I'd say you wouldn't say, um, just, you know, that you can snap out of it, um, that you're alone, um, that, you know, you can fix this by yourself. Uh, cause you know, in reality, you can't, um, you need support with you. You need people that, you know, you can talk to and all that side sort of things. So, you know, I think the biggest thing is just, uh, biggest negative with all this kind of stigma that goes around is just, you know, uh, people not being comfortable sharing their own thoughts and just, you know, not being comfortable being there for someone else and, you know, having compassion for someone else's feelings. Carson, do you think we live in a world like, especially for young people, like you're a college age guy, um, a lot of pressure um, that you have to succeed? You know what I mean? And at your age, you kind of think, am I in the world I'm living in right now? What can I do? Yeah, no, I agree with you. Uh, you know, even from, you know, a personal thing, you know, I play baseball and every single day I go on Instagram and I see a kid that throws harder than me and runs faster than me and hits the ball harder than me. 
So, you know, I think we live in a world that it's uh, very comparative. Um, you're trying to compare yourself to everyone else, trying to be better than everyone else when, you know, you should just be thinking about yourself, how you want to live and, you know, what makes you the happiest. Um, so I definitely think that, yeah, this world is um, in a place for young people, especially very um, centered on comparing yourself to others and making sure that you're trying to be better than someone else when, you know, uh, the world is kind of a place that I think, you know, you should be able to just kind of do what you feel is right, do what you feel you want. And, you know, if, uh, you know, it doesn't line up with someone else's comparisons or line up with someone else's beliefs, then it's just not there, you know, but it's your life, not anyone else's. Because you, you really the only person you can compare yourself to is you. Mm -hmm, exactly. But that's hard. Is Do you think is that social media makes it hard because people put their... You know, I mean, like your baseball thing, that kid's going to put his best pictures on. And he's not going to put something where the, the 99 times that he screwed up, um, you know, but the best. So all you're seeing is people's very best and you rarely see them. Is that even attractive to people? Like, to, you know what I mean? Uh, no, I, I totally see what you're saying with that. You know, I always think that, you know, uh, social media is that one percent of your life that is good. Uh, you know, they try to share that part that, you know, everything's all jolly and positive but you know uh it's not always like that um but i think especially with younger younger people nowadays uh we have a big presence on social media everyone's on it um and you see younger and younger people starting to get you know bigger followings and it's just you know making everyone want to do the same thing when you know that might not be someone's dream and goals or anything like that but you know it might have to be just because you know you want to be just like them how do you, what do you hope that the, the world free of suicide organization, what do you, what, what's your message to people? Uh, really just, you know, our mission is to educate and advocate for those struggling and, you know, just erase the stigma fully around suicide. Um, you know, my goal from day one's just been, you know, I want one, per I, I don't want one person to feel the same way that, you know, my friend felt on Valentine's day when he decided to end his own life. Uh, I want everyone to feel positive. Um, and if those negative thoughts happen, I want it to um, be able to be shared with people and shared with your friends, family, anyone like that. Um, just really creating a comfortability around mental health. And, you know, obviously, um, you know, my organization's next step and what we want to do is we want to create an educational program that we can put into schools just because, you know, uh, as a young person right now, I see the education system and um, I think it's flawed. I think we, we're not taught the right things. And, um, you know, I didn't have one high school class that I heard about suicide, but I heard about drunk driving and, you know, sexual activities all the time. So it's just so something what, I think uh, needs to get changed. So what do you mean not being taught the right things? To be specific with me. I'm just uh, curious. I just think, you know, the surrounding mental health, um, it's just not really spoken about. I mean, in a health class, um, we go over sex ed, we go over opioid use, we go over marijuana, we go over alcohol. Why don't we go over mental health? Um, and it's just, it's a glaring factor to me and I've seen it always. And you know, what I've always thought is if, you know, my friend Will was in a mental health class, do you think he would have killed himself? Cause I don't think he would have. If somebody would have been, would have been talking to him about how he felt that because don't you think that will and, and other people and yourself when you felt that way and i know i have when i felt that way is you do feel like you're alone exactly and you're the exactly. only one who feels this way and if other people knew uh, um you'd be shunned mm -hmm. yeah no i think you know that's that's true it's the biggest thing too just you know everyone struggles and sometimes you're scared about talking about it but you know I think especially with an educational program, I think just comfortability with younger kids would, you know, make that happen. So. So what has COVID done for mental health? From just with that you see with people your age and your friends, what do you, how do you think the re not COVID itself? I always call it the reaction to COVID because it, it COVID is very specific about what it does. Um, yeah. The mental health thing doesn't come from COVID. It comes to how our government and our and our our society responds to it. So, what have you seen in people your age um, be, as a result of that? Um, just you know, really in regards to COVID, with it all, um, you know, just from even like my personal experience with it, you know, I I struggle with a lot of mental issues after you know my 
junior year got canceled and then my senior year got canceled of high school. Um, and, you know, ever since, you know, those days, it's kind of felt like we aren't able to be the, you know, young people we used to be. Um, and just, you know, I think mentally people got um, into a comfortability, especially now um, that, you know, life is starting to look normal again. Uh, I think people got really comfortable sitting on their couch and playing video games all day and being alone. And I think that started to really affect people. And when this all um, kind of, you know, started freeing up, I think people haven't learned how to, you know, fully get back to that point that, you know, they don't have to be alone all the time and they don't have to, you know, be in, you know, isolation. Um, so, you know, it's interesting, Carson, I see like littler kids, how would they do? I, I, Cause I have friends and they said it's hard. Their, their kids are afraid. Like you walk up to them and their kids are afraid of interaction with people. And mm -hmm. it took them the longest time to get their kids to stop wearing masks because they felt like it was safe and mm -hmm. to, to cover that, that up. So do you, do you think people, like you say, comfortable, maybe people got comfortable being alone and not having to deal with life and work and all the things that go on. And so all of a sudden, rather than re-engaging, it's easier just to stand on the sidelines and watch. Yeah, no, I, I totally think that. Um, I just think that, you know, a lot of people and, you know, our society in general got really comfortable with being complacent. And, you know, I'm someone that doesn't like being complacent and someone who never will be complacent. Um, and it just feels like, um, a lot of my peers and a lot of people after COVID just kind of um, found a comfortability in, you know, what they were doing then and just haven't really gotten out of it um, since. Is it kind of like giving up? I, I'd say a tad, but, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be negative and call them, you know, quitters. No, but just, they, I, I just I mean, how about this? Are they stuck? Uh, I'd say stuck probably, yeah. Um, I think they're... Um, people who are looking for help or really want help, but don't know how to get it or don't know, or, you know, aren't comfortable talking about what they need. Um, cause you know, I, I think a lot of people that are still struggling with that whole, um, you know, not feeling safe, obviously, um, you know, everyone has their own opinions on, you know, what was going on and everything. But, um, I think it's more just about feeling comfortable with others now and just being, you know comfortable is my biggest word probably for all of it so right well because if, if if you really you know took it to the end and you said okay i've got to watch you know i've got to make sure i'm protected and who's around me and mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing then it would be then you would get you could get stuck because sometimes stuck is easier than actually re-engaging back in life is that do you think that's why people are having so much trouble getting people to um i mean finding a workforce is because people are you know s stuck yeah, um, I think just the whole stuck thing. Yeah, it's like they're just, um, you know, not ready to, you know, move on from what they were doing before. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to, you know, speak on any religious or governmental beliefs. But, you know, I feel that especially our government now, there's a lot of handouts. Um, a lot of people get stuff for free when, you know, back in the day you had to work for what you earned. And uh, that doesn't really happen nowadays. And I think that, you know, people have got that feeling that, oh, you know, I'm going to get this COVID relief fund. Um, I'm going to get this COVID relief fund money already. So why do I need to go work? Um, you know, a lot of kids my age, especially, were thinking that. So. so how come you didn't do that? Well, I'm still under mama's money, so uh, I can't I can't get the COVID relief money. No, 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 no. You're, yeah. I'm just kidding. Jennifer, Jennifer still's got a thumb on you. Um, <laughs> no, but how come you you don't? How come you didn't get stuck? Uh, I think what, I. What just, you? I think what I've always mean? had goals, and um, my ambitions have always been there. You know, uh, baseball has been a thing that's always kept me going too. Um, and you know, without that. Uh, you know, I don't know where I'd be probably. So, you know, with this world free of suicide, it helped me a lot just because, you know, every day when, you know, I was sitting there on my computer, uh, I was able to, you know, make ideas, um, make a lot of connections with a lot of people and, you know, kind of work in the background. Um, we weren't able to do events or anything like that, but, you know, I took part in a lot of virtual panels um, and we raised a ton of money during COVID actually just through our merchandise store and everything like that. 
So uh, I think that just I was continuously motivated by all those things to not, um, you know, find, much, you, you know, just hanging out. So how much now, because I know a little bit about your family, but how much does your family play into that, too? There's uh, there's not, there's not a whole lot of room in your family's a little bit like mine. There's not a whole lot of room for um, being lazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that, you know, my mom and dad both have just kind of engraved in me really hard work ethic. And, you know, you can't take anything for granted. You know, I've been really blessed in this life. Um, I've gotten anything I've ever wanted, but, you know, I've always had to work for it still. Um, and you always have to be a good person about it, too. Um, so, you know, my my family's always just engraved in me that you got to work hard. You got to be humble and you got to do what's right. And, you know, if you do those three, those three things, you'll be really successful in life. Well, no, you haven't always gotten everything you want. Because, Not everything, but mostly. Well, things that you need or your parents can get. Yeah, okay. But I'm talking about, but you can't buy your scholarships or your baseball or that kind of stuff. You don't get, and you've had dreams of doing certain things, and you've had to modify those dreams just like any person. Mm -hmm. But you but you have, there's something about you that continues to dig and go. You keep trying. And what is that in you, Carson? I'm not sure. Rick, we got to find that out together, huh? <laughs> That's why I'm asking you all these cool questions. <laughs> you, it's, it's, I mean, it, it, it's kind of interesting in a way is Will's death. It's Will, right? Your friend, Will? Yeah, Will. So Will's death um, devastated you, and it almost caused you to do the same thing. But somehow, by the grace of God, you were able to turn that around. And it's really in, be, because of what you liked and cared about him. It's it's kind of made you find who you are through this whole organization. You know what I mean? And kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of growth has happened um, since I lost Will. Um, you know, I felt like I've gone through the ringer uh, with emotions um, and all those types of things. And I just feel like, uh, you know. Compared to people my age, um, I think I've been through some stuff that some people haven't. And I think I've, you know, done some things that some people haven't. Um, so, you know, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's hard to fully explain why I'm so into doing all this. Just because, you know, I think it's just a part of who I am, really, um, you know. Well, it, it kind of, you found part of your purpose, not your entire <laughs> purpose. But you found part of your purpose, right? Yeah. And you're how old? Uh, 19. <laughs> That's pretty cool that you can be 19. And under I lost your mic, buddy. Can you hear me? Yeah, my grandma just called me. I cut out. My bad. Oh, no, it's grandma's bad. <laughs> it's like, Judy, get off the phone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Carson, real quick, you're having an event this week. Um, and it's, it's full, but you're still going to let people come out. So kind of tell people what that is. Yeah. So I'm hosting the, uh, first ever stomp out suicide skills camp. Um, it's going to be at Hamlin sports complex this Friday and Saturday. Well, tomorrow and the next day after that, I guess. Um, it's at that new, uh, Springfield drifters slash Bushnell field. Um, it's yeah. a super great place. I'm going to have tomorrow girls seven through 16 and boys seven through 12. And the next day will be boys only 13 through 18. Um, and yes, I did close registration um, online. But if you are interested and still want to come, just uh, show up at 830 tomorrow or the next day. Um, and we'll get you all checked in, fill out a registration form, all that type of stuff. Um, we are out of camp T-shirts at the moment just because of the influx of people that have uh, came in. So if you do want that camp T-shirt tomorrow, um, you're actually going to get it shipped to you now um, if you're a walk-in. So this is baseball skills. You guys are going to have a bunch of people out there teaching them, coaching them on how to be a, a super cool baseball player like Carson Light. Yeah, baseball and softball tomorrow and Saturday. And it's $60 to come. So, you know, a lot cheaper than a lot of the camps in town. Um, you know, I you know I looked around and, you know, I'm not going to name names, but there's a lot of people charging 100 120 bucks, 200 bucks for a kid's camp and, you know, that's not okay. That's, that's a money grab. Um, so, you know, there's a lot, a lot of things that, uh, I think tomorrow will be good. Uh, I got a lot of, uh, good players there, coaches, high school coaches, college coaches, uh, college players, uh, just kind of anyone who's ever supported a world free of suicide in, in the game of baseball or softball. 
uh, they're kind of coming tomorrow to help out. So it'll be a good thing. And, you know, uh, I'm excited to see all the kiddos out there and, you know, all of them having the world free suicide on their chest would be pretty cool. All right. And does the funding from that go to some of that go to the, the organization? So all, all profits are going to be going to, um, to our organization. We are still deciding, uh, what, organization we're going to donate to um we're going to donate to uh, a eugene nonprofit before i leave for texas uh so we're going to raise that money and uh kind of do what we've always done with the walks and stuff like that just kind of uh raise money um do some philanthropy and then you know give it back to someone else so you know that's kind of what we're about too so all right carson line thank you for taking some time to join us and uh and just talk about life and your stuff and what you're doing i appreciate that of course. All right, buddy. See you later. Good to see you. You too, man. Isn't that a great kid? Oh, uh, yeah. Met him. I think he was, well, he was probably 15 and so impressed with what he was doing. Um, me, impressed with what he was doing. And he really cared about it. And I think, you know, and, and I think there's some, some very thought-provoking things about our kids and culture and what's going on out there talking to a kid. Um, you know, we get a lot of experts that will tell you all this bullshit and what they think is happening and what's going on. Um, I always find um, if you go to the source, uh, you can get a much better idea because um, I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't put a lot of credence in researchers, um, but I always did from uh, going to people. So let me play a couple of sponsor things. And then we got Bill London up with your news. So here's what's going on. Rick Dancer here. Before the fall rush sets in, now is the time to get in to see the dentist. Oregon's best dentist, and still my dentist, is Dr. Michael Bratlin at Chris Dental in Eugene. Dr. Bratlin and his staff are second to none. You have a tooth you need crowned? Give them a call and they'll get you in ASAP. Remember, at Chris Dental, everyone is welcome, vaccinated or not. I'm Carl with New Leaf Hyperbarics and Wellness, and today we're not talking hyperbarics, we're talking light therapy. This is what we call our power bed, so it does red, blue, and infrared light therapy. And for those that don't know, red, blue, and infrared light therapy is great to help our bodies have more energy, help our bodies recover, works with inflammation, so it's a double, kind of like a one-two punch, if you will, with hyperbarics followed by the light therapy or even standalone light therapy. This machine specifically has eight different modes. Mode one is for chronic pain. Mode two is for recovery. Then we have relaxation, a mode for skin to help with psoriasis, different things like that, help pump collagen, so it helps folks keep that youthful look. Mode five is for performance, which athletes really like. Six is energy. Seven is power healing. And then eight is body balance. If you would like more information, please feel free to give us a call at 541-636-3278 or look us up online at newleafeugene.com. Casey here. We're celebrating Derek's birthday. We gave him the day off. We're having street tacos at his favorite restaurant, Primetime. I wanted to share three listings that we have on the market. We've got a three bedroom, one bath on West 23rd. It was a remodel by Mike Sneer Contracting. We've got Another home, a three bedroom, two bath on 1182 Valley View, and it is a Highland restoration, two beautiful homes for sale. And we have one more home for sale, three bedroom, two bath, 478 72nd place in Springfield. Come check them out, you guys. Give us a call. We'd be happy to take you on a tour. Good evening from the News Radio, 1120 AM and 93.7 FM KPNW Studios. I'm, who do I want to be? Svengard. This news brought to you, by the way, by Dr. Michael Bratland of Chris Dental. And I can't give him any higher endorsement than to say, I've allowed this man to stick his hands in my mouth. That really came out kind of creepy. I mean, he's a dentist. That's what they do. They stick their hands in your mouth and devices and mirrors and stuff. That's what they do. And he does a good job. All right. So Oregon Senator Ron Wyden is all giddy about his taxing big oil profits act, or as he would say, taxing big oil's profit act. And it would impose a 21% tax on the excess profits of oil and gas companies making more than a billion dollars annually. And Wyden says excess profits are determined by current profits minus a normal 10% return on investment. 
The legislation would also impose a 25% excess tax on oil and gas corporation stock repurchased by the company. Of course, all of those taxes will be passed on to you, the consumer. Congratulations. Hands meet ankles. Ben City's uh, Ben's City Council appears ready to ban the sale of dogs, cats, and rabbits at pet stores. Councilor Megan Perkins says she proposed the ordinance after hearing repeatedly from a group concerned about puppy mills. And secondly, she says she wants to encourage supporting rescue organizations. Here's the interesting part. In Bend, there are no pet stores currently selling cats, dogs, and rabbits. Of course, the puppy mills that she worries about will still sell the animals in the unregulated private market. Monkeypox cases in Oregon and Washington are on the rise. As of Tuesday, 93 cases reported in Oregon. Washington had 210. Doctors say they don't want to cause alarm, but they're encouraging people to be informed about the disease. Right now, 7,000 doses of the vaccine have been made available for Oregon, but the Oregon Health Authority has only seen fit to release about 1,600 doses. Doctors are prioritizing high-risk groups, a.k.a. men who have sex with other men. Prolonged skin-to-skin contact is one of the primary ways that monkeypox spreads, but they say the disease can also be spread through contact with bedding of an infected person. More rarely, it can be spread through large respiratory droplets. So I guess the message there is, avoid other people's large respiratory droplets. I think that's called lungers in the South. Early symptoms of monkeypox include fever, fatigue, and swollen lymph nodes. In the second phase, patients develop these really nasty, ugly, disgusting skin lesions. Doctors say the lesions are painful and can be debilitating. So, eight Northwest lawmakers are expressing deep concern to the White House over recent draft reports recommending breaching the Snake River dams. They write, specifically, we are appalled by the lack of transparency and obvious political intervention. The letter goes on to say, even more alarming, we've received further indication of political maneuvering by this administration, Joe Biden, to prevent information on the costs of replacing the power generated by the Lower Snake River dams on the federal Columbia River power system from being made to the public prior to the release of the previously mentioned NOAA draft report. Now, the letter pointed to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Columbia River Systems Operation Environmental Impact Station statement and record of decision, which, according to the letter, took four years to complete, included multiple public comments, and cost over $50 million and countless staff hours. In comparison, the recent NOAA draft report appears to have been released without any process prior to congressional notification and any or triggering action. The letter states, even more troubling, the NOAA draft report cites plaintiffs in the National Wildlife Federation et al. versus the National Marine Fisheries Service as sources without representing and referencing non-plaintiff co-managers. Led by Idaho Senator James Reich and Washington Representative Kathy McMorris-Rogers, the letter was also signed by Senator Mike Crapo and Representative Russ Fulcher of Idaho, Representatives Dan Newhouse and Jamie Herrera-Butler of Washington, Representative Cliff Bentz of Oregon, and Senator Steve Daines of Montana. The letter calls for a response from the council by August 15th. Do you think they'll get it? No, because the fix is in. Do you ever get the feeling that for whatever reason, there is a large segment of society that just wants us all to live in mud huts in the dark. School leaders and parents in Salem voted to ban concealed weapons on campuses Tuesday night. While weapons are already banned for teachers and students, this will specifically ban visitors and those with legal concealed carry licenses. Before the vote, people on both sides of the debate spoke out. One man who opposes the ban explained, we advertise to would-be attackers there will meet even less resistance in schools and they'll be more likely to attack schools. And another speaker said, quote, as a mother of color, it scares me to know that white supremacists could sit in this meeting and shoot one of my kids. It scares me to know they could go out to a school and hurt them because of their racist ideology. Apparently only racist carries guns. 
It's true. Ask the gangbangers in Portland. Only races have them. The ban comes after a state law passed in 2021 that allows districts to ban guns. And in a survey conducted by the Oregon Values and Belief Center, 1,572 Oregon residents ages 18 and older were asked a number of questions about abortions after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Most significantly, 62% of Oregonians would vote to reinstate Roe v. Wade if given the opportunity. 22% say they'd vote to keep it overturned. Secondly, 72% of Oregonians believe abortions should happen in most circumstances and be legal, while 23% statewide said it should just be illegal. There's about an 18% difference between rural and urban residents on the abortion or the topic of abortion. All right, there you have it. There's a little roundup for you. A little roundup, a little tight roundup, a ball, if you will, of love. All right, and with that, Rick, it's time for you to roll out a big industrial drum-sized can of reel. Get real, Rick. So uh, how are you guys feeling about all this going on in the world? Uh, it's just pretty crazy right now, isn't it? And um, my wife and I were listening to the radio today and hearing all this happening and the hypocrisy in it all. Um, you know, um, I hear lawmakers and House speakers saying no one is above the law <clears throat> unless you're Hillary Clinton, unless you're uh, the Speaker of the House um, with her um, investing, um, unless you are, um, oh, who else was on my list? But you guys have heard those. But it's interesting how it's 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 OK in one instance and not in another. Um, and I think I've been getting all kinds of questions today from people saying, OK, what do we do now? And I honestly don't know. Um, and my wife and I were talking and going, you know, we heard the uh, DOJ or the attorney, the gen attorney general talking. And, you know, corruption is alive and well in this country. And I don't know how we as people get that under control. Um, but I think we need to do something uh, to, at least in our own lives. I had somebody come on my page berating me and I had him on there for a long time and left him. And I kind of am just into this new place and, and they want to say, oh, you're just building an echo chamber. And it's like, no, you know what it is. I'm getting people who are just, just, just belligerently rude off my page um, because I don't need to put up with that and neither do you. Um, it's not being mean to him. I don't say anything to him. I just block him on my page. And um, is that creating an echo chamber? No. Is it creating a safer place for me uh, to live my life? Yes. Um, do they need to be there? No. I used to think fair was, you know, you had to let everybody have their say. And everybody should have their say, but they don't have to have it with me. <laughs> I don't have to listen to it. I don't mind listening to people who disagree with me at all. But when you belittle me, and you take me and you try to twist my words, um, you're gone, you're off my page. So that's kind of my new MO. I don't care what they say. I think you just have to, we have to stick together and work with the people who want to work with us. Um, that's a super important thing, I think, you know? So we don't attack anything, we don't, we just, but we continue to speak our minds, we continue to use our voice and make sure that we are heard because we've been silent too long my opinion. All right. It's Thursday. That means we will be back on Monday. I think Monday at this point, I think I'm just going to talk to, I have one of my sponsors said, Compton Winery said, you should, uh, you should talk about people who inspire you. So I'm going to find some old stories and, and talk about people who inspire you. On Tuesday, we have a guy named Tyler Spike who lives in Springfield, Oregon, and he is like an ultra marathoner. Um, I also found out he has a kind of famous brother too. And then on Wednesday, Kelly Bodifer uh, was a young lady involved in a traffic accident when she was uh, 17. Um, and the gentleman driving, her boyfriend driving, was killed in Cresswell. Um, well, I saw something she posted the other day and it intrigued me. So she's coming on the show and then I found an old interview with her. And I'm going to air some of those old questions and see what her answers are today. And then on Thursday, Kim Stark will be here. Uh, Rob from Base, Base and Tackle, Rob out of Charleston. And we're going to have a great show on Thursday as well. So that's what's coming up next week. Um, if you ever have any questions, just give me a ring. Uh, send me a note. Send me an email. 
Um, if there's a topic or someone you're interested in, let me know who they are. We also have some more Montana stuff coming up pretty soon. So keep her there. And don't forget our sponsors, Christiano Family Dentistry, Albert Taylor, uh, New Leaf Hyperbarics and Wellness Center, and Roser Real Estate. All right, guys.